Hi guys and welcome to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, at Drayton Park Golf Club. And today I'm in my swing studio, I'm going to do a video on the lead wrist. So in this video it's going to be about what that lead wrist, so me as a right-handed golfer, my left wrist, is doing in the backswing. Part two, because this is a, a quite a big subject and a really important subject as well, um, is part two is going to be how that wrist angle changes on the downswing. So uh, really do pay attention to this one, but check out the next video as well. I know it seems a bit like a, a long subject, but if you can understand what this wrist is doing in the golf swing, it can really help you with a club face control that we're looking for, ultimately to produce a straighter or a more neutral ball flight. Um, so as I said, in this video, it's all gonna be about really what that lead wrist is doing in the backswing. And the first thing to say is although I have a preference is where, in where I want it at the top of the backswing, actually, unless it's causing a fault, you know, it's not an issue. So if you had more of a, a bowed left wrist giving a closed club face, but you are actually hitting the ball very straight, a soft draw, or maybe even a fade from there, then it's not really causing a problem. Whereas if you've got that bowed left wrist, a closed club face, and your bad ones are starting left of target for a right-handed golfer, maybe moving further that way in a pull or a hook, or, a, or worse still, a pull hook, uh, then that is an issue, and that's something that needs to be addressed and pay attention to this video um, to actually try and neutralize that wrist position. And the opposite, of course, if we've got more of a cupped left wrist here, giving us an open club face and our bad shots going right to target, then again, we'd need to address that. But if it's not causing a fault, then don't worry about it. You get players like a, a Dustin Johnson, of course, with a, a very closed club face, a very bowed left wrist at the top of the backswing, but he actually is, is one of the best drivers out there, so it doesn't really cause him a major problem. Where it caused him a problem was on the shots that he wasn't actually hitting them as hard. So on the less than full shots, his wedge play. Uh, in the last two, three years, he's worked so hard at that, he's become a brilliant wedge player as well. But he used to stuff with the bad one going long left. So if it's causing a fault, then it needs looking at needs addressing or something else will need to be working to compensate. For someone like a Dustin Johnson with a closed club face, what he's got to do is make sure he doesn't really release that club. So he's actually got one of the slowest rate of closures out there. So that means that toe of the golf club isn't passing the heel as quickly and he's almost holding the shot off. And he manages to do that with very good lower body work. So elite golfers can quite often find a way. If you're managing to get the, the desired ball flight, then it's not a fault, okay? So I know that's a bit long-winded, but we only really need to start changing club face position if it's causing a, an affected impact. So I wanna go into, um, I guess, my preference uh, and, and then how we would get into that. So at the top of the backswing, what I would like to see is a pretty flat neutral wrist, okay? That gives the, the leading edge of the golf club isn't pointing straight up towards the sky, the toe isn't pointing straight down, the club face is about the same angle as my left arm, okay, my lead arm. So to get that, I'd really like to see a, a flat left wrist. And having said that, of course, there are golfers that way who can play great golf and there are golfers with a bit more cupping in their left wrist. There's probably more with a little bit of cupping than there is into a bowed left wrist, but you can play from both positions as long as you get the next part right. What I really like to see for ease of this and less manipulation needed is a flatter left wrist at the top of the backswing. And for me, it's really linked to this first move, how we take that club away. So if the lead wrist is actually working in too much flexion here, and it's almost like my glove logo is actually pointing down to the floor, that will start to give me more of a closed club face where the loft is pointing down towards the ground. And at the top of the backswing, I'd expect to see more of a bowed left wrist because of it. And what we'll get when we get a closed club face, this is extremely closed just to make it easier for video, is the club face, the loft is all pointing up towards the sky, up towards the roof. So if my left wrist moves too much in flexion underneath, will tend to get more of a bowed left wrist at the top. If my left wrist, my lead wrist, works too much in extension here, will tend to get the club face 
opening, so the toe will be more up towards the sky. And what we tend to get from there is the opposite move where there's a little bit of cupping in that left wrist here, and we get more of an open club face. I think if we get that first position correct here, okay, so the checkpoints I've got and I've done a couple of videos on the importance of the takeaway. I'm going to put a video uh, link into this one to so check that one out as well. So what we're really looking for is a, a very neutral position in this first move where it's the, the upper body, the chest, turning away from the target, allowing the arms to move inwards. Okay, so my hands are moving in towards my trail thigh. Uh, that means the club is just slightly outside my hands and the leading edge of the golf club is mirroring my spine angle. That's what I like to see. That's that club face position I'm really looking for. If I was playing baseball, then that would be the club face I'd be looking for. That would be my neutral position. But because we're in a tilted posture, I want that leading edge the same angle as my spine. So the club face is square to plane or square to path. So controlled with the upper body. My hands are very close to my trail thigh. The club is just outside my hands and the leading edge of the golf club is the same angle as my spine. If I just rotate from there, getting that left shoulder moving under my chin, I'll tend to get a pretty flat, neutral left wrist. So the first exercise I want you to do, and I'm just gonna click on the keyboard, so when I do hit this shot, you'll see the ball flight as well, uh, and all the data will come up on the screen. So I'm just gonna actually take the club away, stop in that first position, check that I'm happy with the club face, and I'm gonna turn and hit from there, okay? So, you could of course do this off a small tee to start with. Takeaway rehearsal, look back at the ball. Turn and hit. So ball that started right to target, move left, just finished a little left to target, um, flew about 160. To finish at 170, uh, five yards off target, so pretty good. All in all, um, was not picking up my dots with my HMT data actually, uh, but we can see a pretty neutral ball flight. The ball started right of target uh, and it bent to the left. A little bit more movement than perhaps I'd like to see, but it's I wouldn't class it as excessive when it's five yards off target at 170. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the, from getting, doing that exercise, I then go into hitting some full shots. I was just thinking of another exercise you guys could do to actually feel that neutral left wrist. And what a, a great one is actually to use just a splint like an ice cream stick uh, or a, the ruler. This one's a little bit on the long side, but I'm just thinking about pushing it down the back of the lead wrist there. Uh, this one, as I said, a little bit too long, but you can get that sensation of this flatter left wrist at the top of the backswing being more neutral. I can't get into a cupping position, and if I do get into a bowed position, the ruler's going to start sticking a long way out from my lead arm. So that could be a real good checkpoint using a ruler. I'm just going to go ahead and try and hit a full one. And what I would suggest you do is rehearse that first movement once or twice if this is something you need to work on. Get the feeling of what you're trying to do before going ahead and hitting the shot. That was a more neutral ball flight. Might land on the line. Yeah, perfect. So a real soft draw. I'm very happy with the ball flight on that one. It's a great exercise. Very minimal ball flight. So I got a flight there that started one degree right to target. It was only just a little bit of curve to the left. Uh, this is still showing it in side spin. Of course, it is a more axis tilt of the golf ball tilted to the left, but by a very minimal number, uh, finishing zero yards off, off target. Uh, you can see when I went to the normal shot rather than hitting it from the rehearsal takeaway, I gained a little bit more club head speed. Uh, I wouldn't worry about losing a little bit of speed when you're doing a drill, but it's a great exercise for you to get that feeling of what the left wrist is doing in your backswing. I hope that video has helped. If it has, please post some comments and questions below. Love to get to answer those. Check out the next part of this video series, which is the wrist position, that lead wrist position on the downswing. 
that will have a huge impact on our effect on the impact um, that we're going to create. So that's worth checking out too. All our social media info you need is coming along the bottom of the screen right now for you. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.